Hi and welcome to Empower TV. My name is Josephine Campbell, but Empower TV is about you. This is a channel for you who like to empower yourself and your business so you can strengthen your leadership and get more success and happiness. And today I'm interviewing Ole Hoyer. Ole is a resilience expert and he's the owner of a company called One Change. Ole, thank you very much for coming. I know that Ole has been working with executives in Europe and US for eight years and for the last four years Ole has been collecting data on thousands of the executives that Ole has been working with because a part of their method is that they have a device that measures the heart viability rhythm which Ole is going to explain a little bit about and um, that's part of the program for the executives and the talents to increase their resilience, but it's also providing us some interesting data about what are the three most occurring challenges for high performers in corporations concerning their resilience, well-being and effectiveness. So, Ole, what is that secret? What is that device? What is it that you do? Yeah, we have this fantastic device called the Bodyguard. It's a, it's a very important part of our programs. We love to get data on people. People love to get data on themselves. And um, what we see from those data is quite remarkable. So how does the Bodyguard work? Yeah, I can show you. I have one here. Yeah. So it's quite simple. You, you, uh, you put the sensor here that actually measures your, your heart uh, rate and your heart rate variability. And then you put the, the little box that actually, um, you know, saves your data. So, so um, it's quite simple to, to actually wear. You, you have to put two electrodes that are stick to your body and then you click the bodyguard on and then you wear it for, for uh, three days, uh, three nights, up to six days, six nights. And then minute by minute we can measure your nervous system and you, how you're activating yourself in different situations. We measure, as, as you mentioned, heart rate variability, which is the variation and the space between each heartbeat. What's, what's, what's very cool about that is that that's completely connected to your nervous system. So you have your sympathetic part of your nervous system, which is your fight and flight. Uh, and that's where you're putting, that's where you activate it, mentioned the physical. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but if you activate it all the time, that starts to become a problem. Then you have the, the, the parasympathetic part of your nervous system, which is your rest and digest. And that's your ability to completely recover. You obviously want to do that in your sleep, but we also like to see that during the day uh, with people taking, let's say, two to three really neat you know, strategic recovery breaks. Mm. Yeah, because when one nerve system is on, the other one can't function, right? So if you're tense and aggressive or stressed out all the time, you get no recovery, no regeneration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what what is it that the data show? What are the three most occurring challenges that good leaders question. are facing? Yeah, good question. I mean, obviously, first of all, um, people don't sleep enough. So we see that uh, most of the executives we have through our program have an average of 6.5 uh, hours of sleep. What's cool about the heart rate variability is we can also measure the quality of the recovery. So a lot of devices don't do that in the market today. So this is where this is you know, very unique and, and different from everything else. So we can also see that, especially in the very high performance environment where we work, that the quality of the recovery of 6.5 hours of sleep is only 60%. So we are down to a you know, high quality of sleep of four hours which is obviously not enough if you want to really perform and be your best. Mm -mm. No, no there's, there's a myth about that you, some high performers, they say like, oh, I can only do with six hours, or I'm trying to do with four, and it doesn't work. Research shows that when you don't get enough sleep, you have half the amount of mitochondria in your cell. Mitochondria is the power plant of your cells. So if it means you have half the energy, not just to feel good, but also to think, to perform, to make the right decisions. So I imagine that you must meet this myth 
about I can do with six hours a lot. We do, and the other thing, we, we, we explain them one simple thing, um, which is circadian rhythm. So the circadian rhythm is a, a just, you know, science that shows how, you know, how we're operating over, over a 24 hours period. And it's very obvious that if you look at the circadian rhythm, ideally every one of us should go to bed at 10, right? sleep at 10 because what happens is from from 10 to 2 you get your full physical recovery from 2 to 6 you get your full mental recovery and that's not something you can change you can't just push it and say i'm gonna go to bed at 12 and then i'm gonna sleep two more hours of course you cannot do that and y'all that's also why you feel different i think everyone knows they feel different if they you know, if you go to, to bed at noon, uh, at midnight and, and get up at 8 in the morning, it feels different comparing to go to bed at 10 and getting up at 6. So it's those quite simple things we explain them. And when they start to shift and change that, um, you see a much better performing you know, executive, not only at work, but also at home, mm. which is equally important. Mm. And, and what is the next thing that the data shows? So we see also that, that people in general don't take you know, break enough, uh, breaks enough during the day. So ideally, the way we should live our lives, uh, if you look at, at science, is 90-20. Uh, so when I say 90-20, it's that you, know, you go all in for 90 minutes. You, you know, you, you're the very best, you, whether it's executing an, an important task, whether it's you know, the, the, the very important meeting of the day, it doesn't matter so much. But that you have those 90 minutes where you go all in and then ideally you completely shut off for 20 minutes um, and then you go all in for 90 minutes again. When we explain that obviously in a very high, you know, high paced environment where people work between 60 to 80 hours a week, uh, it's difficult for them to digest. So, but again, I mean, talking about one change in our company, we, we then at least, you know, inspire them to take one to two really good recovery breaks during the day for two reasons. For one, the first most important one is that all studies shows if you do the 90-20 or close to, you perform up to 15% better. So purely from a performance point of view, you should do it. The second thing is if you are a high performer and you have small kids in your family uh, at home, um, you should do it to save up points so you really can be there when you come home. That's a very good reason. What is the third thing? What is the third trend in management challenges concerning their resilience, high performance, well-being? So, so we also see obviously that people in general just do too much. Mm -hmm. They're switched on all the time. And one of the, the most challenging thing is obviously constant access to device. Most of us have a closer relationship to our phone than we have to our loved ones. And that's becoming a, 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 you know, a huge problem. Both in terms of being present when it's really important. So we also always talk to, to, to executives about, you know, what are, what are the three touch points during the day where you really have to be on and, 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 and uh, be there? So, and in those situations, how can you strategically prepare yourself for that? Um, and one of the, the greatest enemies towards not being present is obviously our constant access to devices. So building strategies where you, you, you take off your device for a period of time, both when you come home, but also that during your work that you don't constantly take your device, um, is probably the, the third most uh, important thing. And do people embrace it? Like, how do they do it? I think there's so much science out there today that just really shows um, that if you shift things around, it can have a massive effect on you. So, as I said, people love to get data on themselves. So when we can show them report with their own data and we can see, we, I had a gentleman who, who was quite furious because he, he was reading every night when he went to bed. Uh, but the, the data showed that the first one and a half hour of sleep, he was completely in, in red. He was activated as if he was, he was active as he was working. And he could not understand that. And I said to him, I'm 95% sure that you're reading from an iPad. Is that correct? And he said, yeah, I am. So 
So the radiance from the iPad, all the colors and everything. And the light that goes into your yes, eyes. Yes, really stimulate your nervous system, yeah, which means that. And hormones. Yeah, so, so again, uh, if, you, if you change that out with a, with a paper book, uh, you will see that you can literally fall to sleep with your book and you boom, you will sleep like a baby and you will have, you know, you will have green from the first minute. Mm. But watching TV, you know, having access to devices very close to bedtime, uh, it's not a good idea. Mm. That's very tangible and I hope it's inspiring for some of you out there. Please give us a thumbs up and a thumbs down. If you like this, we'd love to hear what your thoughts and inputs are on it. Do you have any good tricks on how to increase your resilience and high performance? We'd love to hear from you. So please write us a comment, give us a thumbs up and thumbs down and thank you for watching today. Thank you.